What is going on guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf and this is Marfugal News. Today we're going to talk about the windshield theory. We're going to talk about, of course, uh, birds falling out of the sky and, of course, the potential for that to turn into our next huge event. We'll talk about all of that and world events plus more in just a moment. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. How do I reach the glorious path? He looked at me and he said, sit back. Here's one rule. Just laugh. I had a question, a question I asked. I said, how do I reach the glorious path? He laughed, he laughed, he laughed. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today, we're going to go over a ton of stuff. Uh, over the weekend, a ton happened. So, uh, again, stick around. And remember, you can always go over to marfuglenews.com to follow along. You can also sign up for our alerts. Uh, on top of that, every single article, picture, tweet, video, archive document that we show you here today is going to be bibliographed. Now, when you go to our website, it is very easy to navigate. You will just look for today's thumbnail, falling out of the sky, birds, and we're going to be talking about uh, what the cat dog cat uh, director said. We're going to talk about all of all of what people are talking about right now, which is uh, the next event to happen where we may have to cover our faces. So we'll talk about all of that, but when you go to today's thumbnail, you will see that we have every single source for every single article, uh, tweet, video, picture, document uh, is all there at your fingertips. That way you can check our work. You can retrospectively go back. And again, this is all gathered from all over the web. Uh, this is gathered from multiple sites, again, to put into one place for your ease of use. You don't have to spend hours looking through the internet at all of the different sites. We have compiled a daily news right there for your, uh, for your uh, use. And then uh, again, when you hit the yellow bar, that is web only content. That is the stuff you won't find anywhere else or you won't find here at least because it is too hot for TV. Uh, it is the stuff that is too far to one direction for us to cover and stay neutral. Uh, we try to welcome everybody we can in here. But again, a lot of this, uh, if you know anybody, then you'll know. Some of these subjects, it just be begins into a huge argument and people just argue the entire time, uh, especially the last few years. It's like you bring up one thing and it's it's just like people cannot see eye to eye on certain things. And that has become an issue. And I don't know why we can't go back to when we used to be able to talk and disagree uh, respectfully. So. Uh, again, that's all there for you. Let's bring in my co-host slash Internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugal fam. I am doing just fine. So first off, I just want to thank everybody that has popped in. Uh, Bible Talk 777, Linda G, Dawn Alberta, Survival Living, thank you for popping in last show. And then also, I uh, just want to let you know, today we're going to start off with something very interesting. It's something that I've been personally uh, pretty, in, pretty uh, I've been following this pretty close. And I've also talked about this many times. In fact, if you look at uh, the windshield theory, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second on our on our website in the search bar. You'll see the plenty of episodes we've talked about this and uh, from the time I found out about it uh, to now. And a lot of things have moved forward. So first off, let's go into kind of this current uh, piece that's over the weekend. A lot of people have been talking about. It says millions of bird perishes as U.S. hit by an avian FLU outbreak. 
So uh, again, if you're new here, there are certain words that we try to stay away from to, so we can m reach maximum people. Uh, we always try to substitute or at least do something there. So first of all, if uh, you followed my show, then you would know we've covered a lot of the mass die-offs and a lot of the things as far as uh, the mass beaching of animals and all of the weird stuff that has gone on over the last, really, I mean, forever, uh, but in the last 10 years, it has really picked up to a weird level where people like Jason A that do videos, uh, you know, compiling, they can do it by month. Uh, you know, it used to be where I, I bet he would, you know, do 2021, but now it's like every single month we have these mass die-offs and weird events that no one can explain. Uh, so this one does have more of an explanation, but I think it fits into uh, more of, of what's going on now. It says millions of birds have died in the U.S. in recent weeks uh, because of a strain of a highly pathogenic avian lanza, popularly known as the bird. Mm. It says they're cooking them alive, calls to ban cruel uh, methods of U.S. farms. Actually, by the way, that is related. We had that in, but we put it over on uh, web only. It says the uh, bird... <clears throat> has also led zoos across the U.S. to temporarily close aviary exhibits and move birds away from the public at zoos from Colorado to Maryland. Species ranging from ostriches to penguins have been moved indoors. The virus poses a low risk to humans, but the U.S. Department of Agriculture has estimated that nearly 24 million poultry birds, mostly chickens and turkeys, have perished of this <coughs> since February. When a flock of turkeys Turkeys in Indiana were confirmed to have uh, the V, and it says that the bird cough cough has been seen in at least 24 states. Last seen in the U.S. in 2015, uh, bird cough cough arrives through wild migratory birds, the season for which lasts from March to May. Wild birds, including waterfowl like ducks and geese, tend to not get sick when infected. Farmed chickens and turkeys are, though, highly susceptible. As a result, poultry meat and eggs are in tighter supply. In Iowa, the state produces the most eggs. More than 11 million of the 56 million egg-laying hens have perished. So basically a quarter of all of our, our uh, uh, egg-laying hens have perished. That's huge when it comes to the price of, of these essential items that pretty much uh, are a staple of most households. It says as long as the wild bird migration patterns continue, there is a risk for disease to continue to be introduced into our domestic population. Now, the, what kind of gets me is the fact that they are uh, going to zoos and all of these different places and actually uh, separating the birds. Uh, they, I, they did not do that here, uh, but our, our cousin said that their zoo said that they basically closed all the ones. I, I only know this because I went to the uh, zoo here about a week and a half ago and we went through all of the birds. So hopefully I don't come down with anything. But as far as uh, the avian and separating the zoos, I, I was really surprised to hear that penguins and other uh, other animals are included in this, even some that are kind of like not even birds. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Well, Adam, does that does that mean like they say they're separating them from the humans? In other words, closing off the exhibits, not letting humans go there. Is that because they think that we're the reason or or do they think that we'll get it? I, I think it's probably the former. They, they must think that we're the reason, but... This doesn't really come from humans to the birds, right? Okay, well, so Dex, can we pull up uh, from a previous episode? We talked about the the that list of DHS uh, wants and needs that they they went to the small companies uh, to try to devise, come up with a plan for, and it basically uh, make a product that can deal with all those things. Do you remember that list? There was one that was very specifically on that list that uh, is starting to come into play. And when we looked at that, I told you that this would probably play into the future. And now the future is is looking like it's here. Uh, this list included mass fatality tracking system, uh, rapidly deployable checkpoints. Uh, it included a wearable radiation detector, which you're like, okay, that may be for, say, if a nuke happened or something like that. Uh, there was a something there that that last piece is what I wanted to get that number nine or number 10 on that list. Is it possible if we can grab that? Because I think it can be searched through our I'm website. I'm looking for it. 
So we'll we'll pull that up. But they they by December fifth of last year of twenty twenty one, they wanted this list of things uh, built or made or the plans for them, and these were all things that they wanted basically immediately. And they went to small companies. My small companies, I'm not saying mom and pops. I'm saying the companies that are the subsets of all these huge corporations and that build things. Uh, for instance, like a manufacturing company that makes all the military drones or uh, the companies that make uh, the, uh, say, the the armor, you know, those subsets of companies. That's who that went out to. It also went out to the tech companies. It went out to uh, the small businesses that uh, design. It went out to the the architecture people. It went out to everybody. And it was saying, we need this immediately. And we need you to get it, something into us by December 5th of last year. Now that list, again, some of those things on that list, ex-military or um, current military were saying, saying, you know, we already had an uh, MF, MFTS or whatever, a mass fatality tracking system. They wanted a better one. Apparently they need something even better. Um, and then there were a few things on there. Oh, broadband uh, walkie talkies that could talk across the country without a SIM card, which just so happens within like, it was in January after that came out. Uh, one of these companies, I believe AT&T came out with that without a SIM card, a broadband walkie talkie. So remember a lot of the military use stuff ends up saying, hey, we can also make money off of this in the, the public sector. So they ended up, it was like immediately they ended up releasing stuff like that. So obviously that item out of all the things, and it was very specific, it was broadband uh, walkie talkies that were not cell phones. So very kind of, very kind of uh, telling on how that list of things kept, you know, started popping up. As far as the wearable radiation detector, they're designing pieces. They're designing the new uh, new devices from Apple and from Android and these things. They're doing all sorts of stuff with uh, cell phone capable items as far as, it, say, if you bought a professional uh, government, you know, they would make government cell phones with, uh, say, uh, heat sensors or uh, radiation detectors built in. These are coming. These are things that they have talked about for years and now all of a sudden need very quickly. So we'll talk about that. But the main concern is the every, links and everyone in is trailer. talking about how this is uh, the potential next event. And from Dr. F to uh, Robert Redfield, the, the previous director of the cat dog cat, uh, he is basically saying that this, this will happen and something that has a 50, 50% um, a 50% fatality rate would come out. So let me load this up uh, so you can see what I'm talking about on this list. And I think that this list will end up uh, coming into play later on. So let me show you here. This is the DHS for startups. Win 150000 in research and development. Right? So funded topics it says based on the current pre-solicitation dhs will support proposals in the following topics now the reason why we're going back on this is because i feel like this is going to this is going to come in very important i actually forgot about this automated artificial intelligence distress alerts and monitoring why would you need that well because somebody won't be manning uh the alerts uh just automated artificial intelligence distress alerts and monitoring think about that nobody's there to actually uh, uh to do it rapidly deployable countermeasures at per, per, uh, protected perimeters and structures actually that could be that could be weapons that could also be drone uh anti-drone that could be anti-people that could be a lot of things rapidly deployable countermeasures at protected perimeters and structures okay Th think about that non-invasive non-invasive and real-time detection of counterfeit microelectronics now why would you need that if somebody has maybe a fake uh, fob a fake passport card or a fake chip maybe embedded in their skin who knows uh, basically saying it's proof of of something we've thought about that uh, scenario there and then broadband push to talk interoperability platform so basically push to talk uh, broadband all over the place and it would uh, have 
operability with everything, right? And then it says a step towards agent agnostic detection of biological uh, hazards. Now, if somebody wants to break that one down, they can. Uh, again, I don't... I don't know exactly what they mean there. Streamlined airport checkpoint screening for limited mobility passengers, a mass fatality tracking system, next generation semiconductor based spectroscopic personal radiation detectors. Okay, this is painting quite a picture. It says field forward diagnostic for select agent list toxins to to catch us in there remember the next big thing they say would either be chemical or this big thing right and it says wearable detector for aerosolized chemical threats what kind of picture does this paint and then from port side to pen side here's the point that i wanted to make uh, low cost detection diagnostics for high consequence trans uh, transboundary or nationally reportable animal diseases particularly those with zoonotic propensity, Zoonotic, zo, zoonotic propensity meaning it can go from an animal to a human. And now look at what is being predicted, what is being telegraphed, what is being put out there. A great video was done by Ice Age Farmer just recently, two days ago. He did a great job of putting that all together for you. And again, Dex, I think we'll link that on our website, correct? That's yeah, I'll put a link to his. Okay. So think about this. Now, on top of all of this, we have a ton of other stuff going on. Of course, uh, now many people that watch my show probably already know about all of these other things that are going on at the same time. Uh, basically, the environmental SHTF is already going on. Now, I don't want to argue if it's manufactured, man-made, whatever else. Uh, but what we do know is that something is wrong and something is happening. Uh, the windshield phenomenon or the windshield theory, this is something we've talked about before, but if you don't know this, it is actually very fascinating, and the second you know what it is, you're like, oh my gosh. The windshield phenomena is essentially, it says, or windscreen phenomenon, is the observation that recently fewer dead insects accumulate on the windshields of people's cars. It has been attributed to a global decline in insect population, they say, caused by human activity. It says, as early as the 2000s, it became a commonplace observation among drivers that windscreens after a long drive no longer had to be cleaned of myriad insects. In 2016, Canadian naturalist John Acorn noted the phenomenon had recently become a meme, but questioned whether it was reasonable to assume that windshields can tell us something about our overall number of insects. Now, when you think about it, I, I, when I think about when I was a kid and my mom used to drive, it was all of the time. I rarely see a bug hit the windshield anymore. Now, if you're a trucker, you can chime in now. I'm sure you get bugs, especially in some of the Midwest states. I'm sure that there's uh, more flying low, you know, uh, insects. But in general, most of the urban environments, you just don't see this anymore. I don't, I can't remember the last time this happened. Some would say like, why is this important? Well, the numbers of insects, birds, uh, animals, everything is dropping literally like flies so this is this is super alarming and the more that you look into it and i encourage any of you to go deep down this rabbit hole you'll find uh you can type in just um uh where are the missing uh insects and it will bring you all of these articles you can go through hours and hours every single country is seeing disappearances of not not only the bees everybody talked about the bees because the bees were a huge part and a really just a, a big uh, foundation of everything right the bees keep you know pollen moving around and they, they they pollinate everything and they keep agriculture going but as far as all of the other insects are missing too including spiders including flying insects including everything so there's some sort of imbalance, you know, what, whatever is happening, we don't, we don't exactly know. I'm sure a few people at the very top do. But again, this may be why they're trying to leave Earth. This may be why they're talking about terraforming other planets. And even if you don't believe those are out there, well, maybe those people that are trying to terraform, maybe they do believe it. Maybe they've been told that. What, whatever is going on, it definitely looks uh, like we are in a time of humanity where something is all going down at the same time. If you are somebody who believes in the Bible, it's kind of like, you know, 
it, this is almost expected. But all these thousands of years that people have said the end is nigh, are we really in that 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 time? Uh, it is it is quite alarming to see that now with all of our technology and everything else we're actually seeing these huge numbers die off the coral reefs die off the coral reefs are dying like crazy uh in in just a couple years the coral reefs have been either disappearing turning gray uh, all life devoid and some of these coral reef animals are basically invincible we're talking about actual coral uh coral creatures that uh, essentially, there's only a few, you know, things in the real life that actually have uh, invincibility. These things are essentially that. They end up perishing. Their, you know, pods go up and then it comes back down and it replants itself. It's insane. There's a lot of crazy stuff there. And that's why it's been so strong. Those are dying off. And I'm not going to say that it's because of the great change or any of this. But something is happening. So with these birds... This very well could be set up for something really, really big, and that the last few years are just the practice. Dex? And Adam, just to give you a statistic I found in 2019, uh, the Biological Conservation reported that 40% of all insect species are declining globally, and that a third of them are endangered. So that's pretty significant. 40% of all of them are declining. Do, does everybody realize how serious that is? I mean, you, we don't have to make up theories. There's stuff there that's absolute, and it's it's scary as hell. Uh, so I just wonder if that would play into the global scale of things on why, you know, continents and countries would come together all of a sudden, uh, why all of a sudden they came together to one point and then said, okay, we disagree on this, and now they're going to split into factions. We're talking about every, you know, sci-fi movie come to, you know, coming true. And I mean, the apocalyptic ones, the the crazy Black Mirror episodes, the, just everything. So we've attached this and much more so you can go over and look at this. Uh, it talks about the 20-year studies that were being done. Uh, everything from all of the different countries. But you can go down that rabbit hole and type in any country and say insects are disappearing. And you'll find pieces and studies that go along with those individually. If you can type in India's uh, insects are disappearing, you will find not only just India, you'll find every city in India. You'll find all of these lists of different places. You uh, do Australia or Africa or Europe or U.S. or North America or Mexico, Spain. It doesn't matter where you do. Norway, you'll see that this is happening. So that is terrifying. And what... If you don't know how important these insects are, it's, it's, it could be it could be the end of us, and that's not exaggerating. Uh, if if uh, we don't have them, uh, one second, let me pop over. Thank you, everybody, over on D Live. I appreciate you guys. It looks like we have Lynn Wen, uh, I love Jesus forever, Blowtorch Barbie, Gem Gem. Thank you for modding. Thank you for uh, great attendance, Karen from Columbus, Blowtorch Barbie. Uh, over on uh, YouTube, I hope we have, uh, might have bones. Uh, let's see here. Uh, thank you, Zen Wen, Startled Moose, Born Against Buddhist, uh, Reptar Hunter, Hard Styles, Seeking Truth, Cory Cory, uh, Bug Nana, Laguna Berry, What Is Going On, Christine Moore, San Diego Scott, Raymond Knight, Mary. Thank you, everybody, for popping in. Uh, spiders are eating them, but Ed Brown, uh, from what I have read though, the spiders are disappearing too. I actually see less spiders just in general, even in spider season where all of a sudden they're just everywhere. All right. And have you noticed this? Put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And let's see here. Terrified tourists run from the uh, for their lives in Times Square after a large manhole cover explosion. So, as far as this goes, we actually have covered a couple things in Times Square, including all of the power going out in Times Square a couple years ago. I, but it, this one was definitely odd. It says, throngs of terrified tourists took off running in Times Square Sunday after three manhole fires led to a loud blast that one nearby resident uh, said shook her whole apartment. 
Videos from the scene show pedestrians dashing through the crossroads of the world uh, just before 7 p.m. In a video posted to social media, a young woman films herself as crews respond to the manhole fires. The explosion is heard and then she begins to run and saying, what the F? What the F was that? It says that the uh, New York Fire Department did not reveal the reason for the manhole explosion, but officials found elevated carbon monoxide levels at 229 West 43rd Street after the blast. High levels of the odorless, colorless gas, uh, which could lead to brain damage or death, were likely caused by an entrapped manhole fire. So this is, once again, uh, in the very specific area that this has happened and they explained it as, as some sort of electrical thing or I don't know how they'll end up uh, saying this, but you know they have to do full investigations and then they usually put something out. Dex, do you remember we've actually covered a few of these and they're always in the same area and it's like a, a fire underneath Times Square? Yeah, in, in the past we've done them because they were uh, power related. This one doesn't seem to be power related, but they've all been under ground and they've all been in manhole covered so uh yeah and and, and, and it's kind of the picture if you scroll further down you can see some of the people running the scene when this happened was kind of crazy because this was a busy time people were going to you know the broad they were lining up for shows at broadway and other other stuff so it was kind of a, a very busy period when this went actually happened uh so a lot of people were just extremely panicked well, and it's Times Square after, you know, 2001 of September. Pretty much everybody's probably what the hell is going on. And who knows? They cover up things like that. We know that uh, a ton of they, they've looked. We've we actually have warnings of uh, numbers of people coming across from the south uh, that are from other countries that are basically trying to take a bunch of people out. Uh, if if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. And then this is pretty crazy. So Musk is backing off of Twitter board, opens door to hostile takeover. Now, why they say that is because essentially we talked about how this would be important if he took this board position or he said he was, he was on the board. Uh, but now he is turning down the board position at Twitter because apparently it would actually uh, limit the amount of stock that he could buy. It would also, uh, Dex, didn't they say that basically he it would limit his um, his ability to post? So he couldn't say whatever he wants if he's on the official board. He basically has to censor himself. Yeah, he would have had to go, go through a background check. He would have to uh, agree to certain things and and how he represents the company um, publicly. So he would have to he'd be restricted in what he could or couldn't say publicly. Um, and then he also had a stock restriction of like 14.9%. He couldn't own more than that. So I think the Twitter was quick to give him a board seat because they, they thought, well, we can at least prevent him from, from, you know, causing harm in their eyes or prevent him from buying the company in their eyes. So they, they sort of threw that out there. And uh, it, I, I don't know what his thinking was about accepting it and then rejecting it other than maybe just playing a public game. Um, but, but yeah, he, you know, officially rejected it. And now that that's happened, you know, that sort of leaves the, the whole, uh, idea open that he can, you know, go after a, an absolute takeover if he wants, it's called a hostile takeover where he would just buy more of the stock until he gets, you know, a controlling share. Now it could be the 14.9%, but it also could be that he just likes to post whatever he wants. In fact, he's gone to court over the FCC filings, like because the F or the FCC has problems with him saying things because he could say tomorrow, like, I think Dogecoin is, is going to hit the, you know, the, the ceiling and millions of people will go out and buy it. And it m manipulates that coin uh, or whatever. I, and I'm not an expert into the whole crypto world, but Dex, that's essentially why they did it, right? Because his words are so uh, powerful as far as like the market goes, he can actually do damage. Isn't that why they did it in the first place? Well, yeah. I mean, he's, he's you know, moved markets just with his words, whether it's uh, things he owns, which he gets in trouble with, with the SEC or things he doesn't, um, uh, or we don't know if he does like crypto and others. So, I mean, he has a huge, huge following on, on Twitter. So, uh, aside from him just being a, a massively popular public figure. So yeah, when he speaks, uh, it, it makes a lot of waves. 
Well, and he's he's just uh, he's somebody that is so unique. It's hard not to watch, uh, especially when he says the weird stuff that makes you think that he knows a lot more than you think. Uh, thank you, Zippy Moons, since, Jenny from I'm Texas, sorry. and uh, Gem Gem. Thank you guys for popping in. Go ahead, Dex. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, um, and since this all went down over the weekend, he has actually deleted a handful of his tweets. Uh, he put up one poll that said, should you remove the W uh, from Twitter? That's now gone. And then right after he declined the board, he put up an emoji face with his hand over his mouth, and he's deleted that. And maybe another tweet or two that he's deleted. But it's interesting to see the, the the deletions of the tweets. Yeah, I just wonder if how far you can go back and and you know what old school tweets he got rid of. Uh, why this matters too for anybody that didn't watch previous shows on this is Twitter is extremely powerful. Not so much in the U.S. It is powerful in the U.S. They. They decide all the stupid canceling and all of this based on uh, bots or or different nation state actors that have a million people on their uh, paid payroll to to make a big fuss out of things and cancel people. Uh, it is powerful in that way. It's powerful in Hollywood, but it is very powerful for controlling whole countries. When you're talking about certain countries, actually have upwards of ninety percent of their population on Twitter. Uh, you know, maybe uh, smaller than the U.S., uh, but some of them are very elitist, rich countries, and you have control over the information or how information is viewed through Twitter. Twitter is extremely powerful. If you don't, know, if you're not familiar with Twitter, uh, the main thing is you can share videos, you can share pictures, and you can share those those texts. Uh, it is who is on Twitter that makes it so important. Pretty much every politician of the entire world is there and they can get out messages to, you know, millions of people in uh, Musk's case, hundreds of millions, I believe. So it is a powerful tool uh, to control. And then Xi makes semi-secret delivery of missiles to Serbia. So they said semi-secret, but essentially he is ne now helping uh, Vlad. So this is a big movement, I guess, backwards in some ways and forwards for Russia. It says Russian ally Serbia took uh, the delivery of sophisticated Mooney's anti-aircraft system in a veiled operation this weekend amid Western concerns that an arms buildup in the Balkans at the time of the conflict in UKR could threaten the fragile peace in the region. Media and military experts said Sunday that six uh, G Air Force Y-20s uh, transport planes landed at Belgrade civilian airport early Saturday, reportedly carrying uh, HQ-22 surface-to-air missile uh, systems for the Serbian military. It says that the Chinese car uh, cargo planes with military markings were pictured at Belgrade's Nikola Tesla Airport, of all ones. Serbia's defense ministry did not immediately respond to AP's request for comment. So this is, again, this is from Associated Press. And then it says that the Y-20's appearance raised eyebrows because uh, they flew in mass as opposed to a series of single aircraft flights, uh, wrote the Air Warzone uh, online magazine. The Y-20's presence in Europe in any numbers is also still a fairly new development. So instead of coming one at a time, these things came in a, basically they came in a, a flock. Uh, so big, big planes, and they all came at the same time. Uh, definitely caused some public public uh, scenes there. Uh, which, uh, mind you, I believe there are two different videos of these coming in on Twitter, but I could be wrong. I believe that's what they were talking about here. And then just to go over quickly, thank you so much for everybody that has popped in uh, to YouTube here. Let me pop this open. And Stephen McMahon, thank you. Lola Cafe, I appreciate you. Laura Shepard. Uh, looks like popped in last. Uh, and then uh, Craig Alicious, the sun is acting very strangely, uh, very active, then very quiet. Is it building up energy? That active sunspot is coming back around and it is growing. So Craig Alicious, we will have wages on most likely in the next couple days. Uh, wages had a few things to say. Um, in fact, I'll probably pop that up and, and read some of the texts that I got from him. And then Don Alberta, thank you. Trisha Ann says Dex, Dex and Mods, thank you all. I appreciate that. Thanks, Marf, says Trisha Ann. Thank you again. 
And then Tukudika, which I believe Tukpa, anyone traveled internationally without the VC. It says work uh, might be sending me to Saudi Arabia in a month uh, in June. Need advice. Figured the fam knows best. Uh, Twitter at Tukpup. Thanks, guys. Much love. Dex, Adam, and Mods. Uh, Tukpup. Uh, no, I have not traveled internationally, so I don't know. But if anybody wants to answer that question, feel free to do so in the comments or in the chat. Nige's view on things. It's nice to see you again. Uh, that rainy day is here. Time to get ready. Much love and peace to the fam. Adam, Dex, and Mods. Hey, thank you, Nige's view on things. And I hope you are still creating and doing awesome things. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to wages. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay, so over the last couple days, there were several pictures that he ended up sending. So we'll probably go over these. But a huge blast came off of that one sunspot after it passed. Uh, but it was... It said, not sure if the link works for you. If it does, let me know. If not, pics are here. It says, big sunspot on the backside, causing the whole sun to have seismic activity, changing the vibration on the whole sun. We just got hit with a G level, a G3 level storm, completely blindsiding everyone. It has a chance to get bigger. So that's almost, uh, Craig Galicious, that's kind of what he said to a T. Um, and then actually sent some great pictures. So I hope on the next time he comes on, he can go over these. And then it says another unexpected halo eruption from the sun headed our way. And this was all, uh, this was today. So, and it says NASA model confirms direct hit in a couple of days. NASA model confirms direct hit in a couple of days. So it, it actually did confirm. Uh, it was a question if it was going to, and then it did. So we will have CMEs, but this is, again, on top of tons of solar activity. This is no joke. One of the craziest uh, sun cycles that modern watchers have seen. Anybody that covers solar weather right now is basically, uh, they have, their, they have their, uh, their day set for them almost every day now. Uh, Wages has been covering this. If you haven't uh, gone over to Wages World and checked out his channel, make sure to go do so. He's covering all of the solar flares. He's calling, covering all of that. Irish Rebel, by the way, I was I was midway through uh, responding to your email. Um, I will make sure to uh, get back to you on that. Thank you for reaching out, Irish Rebel. And yes, I believe there's something there. Um, and then Bible Talk Triple Seven. Uh, Bible was written so. Every generation thought it might be time, but this is the first time tech has made the unimaginable imaginable and prophecy is coming to pass fast. Plus the IS country had to come back after 2000 years and then the 80 year clock started. Actually, yeah, somebody was just talking about that on a video I was watching by, uh, was that is news live? I think. And then I have a website that shows in-depth reports on animal deaths. It goes back several years, says Kendra Perkins. Kendra, I want to. Uh, I would love to hook up with you uh, on that website. Uh, if you can, send it to us. And if it's, uh, if, if it's of worth, we will definitely share it on the show. All right. And then, uh, Dex, before we talk about UKR situation report, leopard tanks could arrive in six weeks with Germany's approval. We're going to talk about, of course, uh, now certain countries are going to be joining NATO. Uh, they Some say within the summer. Uh, we'll talk about that and uh, the response from Vlad. First off, though, I do want to remind you, if you actually want to protect yourself against EMPs or CME, speaking of solar activity, I would highly recommend going over to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. EMP Shield is a company that we actually started working with before they got all of these massive contracts uh, with uh, the likes of DHS, DOD, and now the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid. So the military and government is actually, uh, they called these guys, um, what basically what they make is a surge protector on steroids. Uh, the, this is something that is way, way above anything that you can really find. Uh, again, this actually can ground the signal from 
uh, all phases of an EMP, E1, E2, and E3, in as little as a picosecond. Not even a nanosecond, but a picosecond. Uh, again, this also can ground that signal from a solar flare. So if we have another Carrington level event, this would ground that signal before it can fry your car, before it can fry your house, your RV, your boat, your motorcycles, pretty much anything that you want to keep running after uh, this happens and, or when this happens on, on the solar side, we will have another Carrington level event uh, and we have no idea uh, how that, when it, that is going to come. It is overdue. Uh, but you would want one of these uh, wired in. The car version, which is their most popular, takes about 10 minutes to put in yourself. Uh, maybe if you are not technically advanced and, and not good with the screwdriver, maybe 15 minutes. Again, that's marfuglenews.com slash EMP. You'll get $50 off per device, which adds up, especially if you have multiple cars that need protection or if you want to do your house, your car, your boat, Whatever combination, they even make one for your ham radio. So if you do have a ham radio and it's not protected, I'd highly recommend that. If you can't afford this, there are different options. Even EMP Shield themselves, uh, through their, their different outlets, they actually teach people how to make Faraday cages and things like this. So they even help you uh, so you have the ability to, uh, if there's stuff that they can't cover, they will help you protect it. Uh, even the stuff that they they do help you protect they do that because they actually do believe this they're part of the community uh they're part of the they're in fact part of the prepper community uh hardcore before they even had this company almost every founder is part of this actual community and everybody loves these guys so make sure to go check them out veteran owned and 100 percent american made all right, and then uh, can't forget lightning protection as well. So if you're in the Midwest and you've got lightning all the time, it's cheaper than one lightning strike uh, as far as paying for a deductible if your house gets struck. So, and that's a $25,000 guaranteed insurance policy on uh, lightning. All right, and then Dex, let's go into uh, leopard tanks could arrive in six weeks with Germany's approval. You want to cover that? Well, yeah, here we go again. More uh, countries that are dumping old technology <laughs> into UKR, uh, probably in hopes of buying new technology or at least <clears throat> getting it given to them at a discount. So, uh, but it, it appears that uh, Germany is on the the verge of putting in a whole bunch of uh, new to UKR, but old from their supplies of tanks. So just to show you, this is uh, this is um, an image of a leopard tank. We talked about this previously, how a lot of this old gear or defunct or older stuff, like the, uh, what I believe it was like the S-300 missiles, where now they went to S-400 and S-500 missiles. Uh, the older stuff, in fact, what, what country sent them their only surface-to-air missile system? It was like their only S-300 I forget which one, but it was uh, Latvia, maybe, sent them their only uh, surface-to-air missiles. Uh, and I, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong in that. I feel like it would be Latvia, not Romania, uh, one of those, one of the, I want to say the, one of the Baltic states. Uh, but they sent one of their only yeah. systems there. And who knows, because they sent that off, is it some sort of tax write-off? Do they get benefits from the UN? Do they get benefits from NATO or something? Uh, you know, do they get something in return? That's my question. Uh, but either way, uh, sending tanks there is probably looked down upon uh, yeah, from certain countries there. And then Vlad's aging ex-soldiers to fight in Echo. Oh, look at who they compared to. In Adolf after almost 20,000 wiped out. It says Vladimir plans to use aging retired soldiers to replenish his forces after almost 20,000 troops have been wiped. This is again, it says the British government claims the tactic will be used in an effort to generate more fighting power in response to mounting losses. So, by the way, it is completely contradicted on the other side. Uh, that's why it's really hard to, to know which side is telling the truth. Every side is going to say that they're winning and the other side is running for their lives and they're panicking and they're uh, basically, you know, just uh, bending over and say, please don't hurt me. Uh, both sides are doing this. If you look at the articles, it's almost like they were written by the same people. Uh, if you look at the videos that are coming out of, R you know, RT, it's like, uh, you know, 
elite forces left in a hurry abandoned their gear out of fear. And then you look at our side and then you see uh, NATO and, and Europe and all these European news outlets saying that they basically just dropped their stuff and ran for their lives. Both sides are saying this. So I would say just use your gut feeling on what you think is going on on most of this. As far as understand during times of actual conflict, there is actual propaganda. Uh, but if they are doing that, um, we do know that they have done a draft of sorts, uh, over 140,000, and that was confirmed through uh, Vlad's side. And here's what uh, a few of the Fugelfam members with family in uh, Russia said. They said that through the welfare system there, uh, they are basically telling everyone to get prepared uh, to potentially be drafted. So if they're talking to basically every citizen and saying, hey, you may be drafted, maybe something bigger is on the way. That's just my opinion. What is yours? Let me know in the comments down below. Over on DLive, thank you, Release the Quacken, Gem Gem. Again, you don't, you know you don't have to support it. Thank you for modding. And then uh, Jenny Texas, Jordan B. Bear, and Marsha Young, thank you for subscribing. Kendra Perkins, again, thank you, thank you, and thank you. It says the new recruits could be more than 60 years old with federal law capping the ages of military personnel, uh, 1945 reported. So I, I don't know how how bad that would be or if that might be a... Uh, just looking at it from an experience standpoint, if they've got some experienced guys there, that may actually be a, I don't know, a good move on their end. Who knows? And then Vlad warns Sweden to uh, and Finland better say "nyet" to NATO. Now, there was two articles. We didn't want to just put two articles of the same thing, but essentially there were, there's another article that talks about and another main uh, source now saying that uh, Sweden and Finland may be joining NATO by the end of summer, which is a huge fast track and a huge deal. These are historically neutral com uh, countries, and now they may be on the NATO side. Now, if you've seen UK are on fire or any of these other pieces that go over the history of stuff, then you kind of understand this. Dex, do you want to explain why this is a big deal? Well, yeah, anybody, um, you know, I, I guess if you're in uh, the Bears position, you look at any of these countries that are not NATO um, and you look at them as potential um, neutral participants. They may they may logically side with you on an issue or or they could side against you, but at least they're not having to be beholden to a pact that they have with all the other countries. Right. And all of the NATO countries basically st usually stand together, especially on NATO uh, lines that are in their, their agreement, but on other things, they tend to ally together. Um, and, and ironically, even the bear tried to become a member of NATO and was denied. Uh, they thought maybe that would be the, the, the solution uh, many years ago was, hey, we'll just join. And that way you don't have to have a group that's against us. We'll be part of it. Uh, but they were denied. So there, you know, in his but from his point of view, he's looking at any countries that that strengthen and grow and expand um, in into that organization, the NATO organization, as sort of a threat. And especially when you look at the locations of Finland and Sweden, they're up there at the north. They're in the Nordic area. They're right there. They, you know, they are very, very close to their borders. They go through the waters that are right there um, with uh, the bear country. So it's it's definitely something that's going to be of concern to him. Uh, I would think the UKR was of greater concern because um, it's literally at the back door, uh, so to speak, or the closest country basically to um, uh, that was, uh, you know, had the potential to flip that was close to uh, Moscow. Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of what this is. And yeah, they have made the U S officials expect um, that they will make a bid to join potentially as early as June. So this summer, that's, that's the big, the big deal. And that's why he's, you know, putting out his message and saying, Hey, you guys don't join. It, it'll be, it's not what I want to see happen. Not that they're beholden to what he says, but that's what he's saying. <clears throat> and Vlad is uh, essentially surrounded by NATO, uh, especially if uh, Finland and Sweden join uh, that is, I want to say that would be like 18 different countries uh, over the past many years that have then uh, joined. 
it is not good for him because it's all of the allied countries essentially s- surrounding him. Uh, in the beginning, a lot of people were debating and, and arguing, frankly, over uh, whether he was actually pushing forward and trying to do this out of, of angst or if he was doing it out of a defensive measure saying, you know, you can't uh, let UKR into NATO and all of these countries because then you're moving military gear and could potentially move in missiles and all sorts of things uh, into uh, UKR right on their border. And how they put it in the beginning, it's kind of like if if uh, the access uh, access of you know China and everybody else moved into Mexico, right? Go ahead. And Adam, grab the map. I just threw a map in uh, to screener of NATO countries, and you can and you can see where everybody fits into this mold because they're highlighted which ones are NATO and which ones aren't. It's really informative for those of you that don't understand or don't have a really good handle on European into uh, the, the Soviet air type um, geography. So this will help quite a bit, I think. So the blue is NATO. Uh, the yellow is non-aligned. So if UKR joins Finland, which is on the border, and by the way, Finland uh, has now massively put up a defensive uh, line along their border. And then Sweden. So you would just have, well, on this side at least, you would have Georgia, UKR, and Belarus on their direct borders. Uh, but essentially all of this uh, would go there that way. And then just to show you, since it shows you there, uh, Serbia is where they just shipped those surface-to-air missiles. You have Switzerland possibly in this thing as well. I, I, I have a prediction that Uh, Switzerland will also be in the conversation very, very soon. Uh, They have been transitioning financially for for a a number of years. Switzerland has always been this neutral kind of place. You always hear about the the Swiss bank accounts and everything because they they have different different, uh, rules there and everything else. Um, And then we've even talked about Bosnia and then Macedonia. Uh, Those are, I believe, hardcore holdouts, but there was some rumor... Uh, that they were something was going on with their governments and the people that lead them and if they were going to try to flip those people out or something i don't know and don't forget moldova from the president of belarus yes that's in that right map yes so wait wait so uh, yeah yeah in the map that they showed and that's showed... right there to the bottom left of ukraine so would this be them i remember the arrow went basically up from ukr into Moldova. So correct. And then yeah, this is they're, they're neutral. They're not aligned. Moldova is not aligned. They're very, I don't want to speak bad about the people there. The people are fine. The country's very corrupt um, as far as like politicians and stuff. So there's a, a lot of weakness, I guess, or, or influential capabilities there in the sense that, you know, I think that's what they were looking at when they looked at UKR. It's like, well, we get this, we just scoot on over to Moldova. It's an easy take. Yeah, and it's uh, it, size-wise, uh, it actually has – the. I, I was looking in the population was actually pretty high for how small it is on a map, uh, but it, it – they do have a lot of uh it's not it's not exactly the richest country either yeah it's only 2.6 million yeah so it's it's about two and a half size two and a half times the size of washington in all of the u.s right in just our state two and a half times uh the size or population of our state and then before we talk about the chemical (laughs) I do want to remind you right now, if you do want to get prepped up and you want to get things lined up as far as uh, long-term survival food uh, for apps for app, actually over two years, people asked us for uh, somewhere to go uh, because again, this is our suggestion. This is my Patriot supply. Uh, they have not raised their prices. They have amazing food that can actually last for years and years. Uh, they have setups right now. Right now, they have a hundred and fifty dollars off on a three month supply. Uh, that will not uh, last forever. I know that because of inflation and everything else that's going on. Uh, one thing they they haven't done through this last year of inflation 
Uh, they didn't. They were one of the few that did not raise their prices. Uh, others are actually just canceling orders altogether. Uh, some of the smaller companies cannot keep up with supply and demand. This one can. So if you want to get everything and get it from one spot, this is a great spot because they have everything from iodine tablets, from emergency radios, power and lighting, stoves, uh, survival gear, any kind of gadget you can think of that you would need, you know, fire starters, all sorts of stuff. Uh, again, is right there. Marfuglenews.com slash prep. Uh, the reason you would want to go through this as well is because you can actually support the channel and in most cases get a discount. As far as uh, when you go through this, it doesn't cost you a cent extra and it helps your favorite channel at the same time. Uh, it's things like this that keep us going since, again, uh, we are controversial and we're not suitable. So these things help a lot. All right, and then... That is marfuglenews.com slash prep. And then chemical horror as uh, Vlad drops poisonous substance on city. This is what is being claimed. It says people suffering. Now we've seen a lot of the whole war criminal talk going around. And as civilians, most of us don't know what the heck is really going on. But this is what is going in the history books. We talked about this the other day. Something may be completely and utterly different from what is, you know, being said. But just remember what is going to be in the history books as uh, what happened in these events. It says that the Vlad forces have dropped a poisonous substance of an unknown origin from a drone on military and civilian targets in a besieged port city of Maripol. It seems like Maripol is really getting uh, the shaft of all of this, Ganda. According to the city's Azov Battalion, people are reportedly suffering respiratory failure and neurological problems as a result. The regiment's report states that the victims have respiratory failure, uh, vestibulostatic syndrome. Uh, the consequences of using an unknown substance are being clarified. It says the development comes hours after President JB warned that Rufin would pay a severe price if it uses chemical against UKR. So just hours after JB publicly announced to the world uh, that they would punish them if they used chemical substances just like this, then it happens. Use your gut. I'll let you do the thinking for yourself. You're a grown adult in most cases. So figure that one out on your own. He did not expand on what the consequences would be, but ruled out direct confrontation between NATO and uh, Vlad. It, it really looks like just a really crazy proxy right now. And I think a lot of us are praying that it, it stays a proxy and does not get into a direct confrontation. Uh, JB is always clarifying the current, uh, you know, uh, puppet in chief. He is basically saying that he always says, you know, we're not going to get into a direct confrontation. That's WW3. At what point does that stop? At what point does it go a little bit too far on one side or the other? A lot of us are expecting some sort of massive event to pop off uh, to change things. That very well could happen outside of that country. It could happen in the Middle East. It could happen somewhere else. Uh, Dex, what do you think about as far as uh, this substance happening and the timing? Well, we've we've seen this uh, story before. Like, let's just put it that way. You know, it doesn't take you don't have to go back far in history uh, to go to the ME and go to the country that begins with SY and the conf the proxy conflict that we had amongst others uh, with uh, the bear and the numerous times we heard about this, these types of things happening there, whether they were. Uh, True or not is for you to decide, um, but that's, I'll just say, you know, the it's almost like just change names of locations and insert story uh, again, right? Almost to the T. All right, so again, we'll let you, you be the one to decide what's going on here. Again, crazy. Uh, email today said my PS was on the way. Uh, thank th uh, again. Thank you so much. I believe so. You got the. That is really cool. Thank you so much. 
Uh, and then Stephen McMahon says, I think this whole uh, quote conflict is a fake ballet. Not sure what the oligarch internationals are up to, but this doesn't make sense. No, not much does anymore. And I think that just as, as regular people, we're just trying to live our life and, and be I, I as part of the prepper community, and that's how I would consider myself. I think that we just need to look at the patterns and see even if we can predict 1% of it before it happens, uh, I think that we'll be better off than most of the crowd. Uh, by choice, most of us are looking into this, and by choice, uh, we are we are absorbing everything that is happening. There is a good percentage of people, which you probably know some in your family, you know some in your at your work and in, in your personal life that just tune out, and they're more focused on the Will Smith and Chris Rock slap. Which, no offense to some of you that may be doing both, right? But there are some people that will not look at any of this. Uh, that totally zone out on all of the media, which I understand not watching legacy media anymore. But as far as they don't even look at alternative sites, they don't look anywhere. They don't want to know and they want to go uh, about their Lala. Now that it, it depends on perspective. If you're a single guy and you're doing that, I, I think that's uh, I think that's fine. Or if, if somebody else in your family is has taken on the role to be aware. But I think uh, especially parents... Anybody that has, uh, you know, the matriarchal or the patriarchal position in their family, I think that it is kind of a responsibility that you know what is happening because anyone who is side, you know, uh, side blinded by any of this stuff, they're going to be 10 times more worse off than anybody that even just barely knows that it's happening. I can only imagine all the people that have no idea what, what to do, uh, haven't even thought about it when all the power goes out. Everything goes out. You realize, wait a second, there's no storm. Wait, why Why doesn't my cell phone work? Why is Why is uh, there no Wi-Fi? Why, uh, why is everything off? Why are all the cars stopped in the middle of the street? And they have no idea what is going on. I guarantee you there will be people that will be asking somebody like any of us, what is going on? And it won't take us a second longer to say this, this was an EMP or this was a CME. Something happened. Get home. Go to your family. So many people are going to be hit on the side of the head. It's not even funny. So as far as going out through this, I hope that we can predict as much as possible. But I think all of us are in the same boat. Is this conflict going to turn into a legitimate WW3? It sure as hell looks like it. And it also looks like uh, this is like time repeating itself. It's like we're in the same scenario over and over and over again. And then it says that Vlad purges 150 FSB agents in response to Vlad's botched conflict with UKR. They had to put that in the title, right? The, the only thing I disagree with is we don't know how, how it's actually going. We're only getting half of the story and we're not even getting a third party kind of look at this. A lot of those are deleted now. It says a Stalinist mass purge of, of secret intelligence Vlad agents underway after more than 100 agents were removed from their jobs and the head of the department responsible for UKR was sent to prison. In a sign of President Vlad's fury over the failures of the invasion, about 150 Federal Security Bureau officers have been dismissed, including some of those who have been arrested. Now, during conflict, like big conflict, uh, there's always going to be spies. So I just wonder how off or how different than this is than any former conflict. I wonder if you go back to WW2, WW1, if you had people arrested for being spies, espionage, all of these things. How many? Is 150 even that many? Or is that uh, a ton more than ever before? That is one question I don't know. But I, I assume on both sides that I'm assuming that we are probably arresting people or uh, UKR is arresting people or even, you know, worse. Uh, but we don't, we don't exactly know what the real numbers are. But it does look uh, like there are some some spies here in action inside conflict time russia putin isn't losing 
so Dex, exactly what we were uh, kind of going over. You want to explain this one? Yeah, sure. So this is coming from Axios. So it's on, it's, you know, Western uh, media, but um, it, it's basically trying to make the, the notion that even though um, we may say, or the West may say one thing, uh, what's happening or what's being said over there is totally different, right? And even the sentiment uh, in their country, in the bear country, is not completely against what he's doing. Um, and plenty of people actually, you know, sort of, I guess, just go along because they know there's, you can't go, you can't not go against, you know, you can't, if you go against it, you, you run risks too. Uh, but still, it's not as, at least the message in their country is not the same thing that we're saying in our country, right? It's totally different. It's, it's definitely something that in their eyes is, you know, not as bad as we make it out to be. Basically, they are saying over there, it, you know, fake news. And a lot of their people, whether it's true or not, are saying same thing we're saying over here. Uh, mo majority of people are saying anything out of Vlad's mouth is totally BS. I think most of us here are in the middle and saying, hey, there's some true parts here and there, but this is all BS. And there's something well, and the one else. person who would rally the um, the dissent over there is in prison, right? He's the one person they locked up a, over a year ago before all this went down. And that's uh, Navalny, right? Yep. So both sides are, are pushing down any kind of dissent. Uh, that's why I believe it. Uh, this is eventually going to turn into more than just a proxy. This is, this is years in the making. Uh, Moxie 71. Thank you for the diamond. I appreciate all of the support over at D live. Uh, big fish. Thank you for being there and release a quack. And thank you for gifting out uh, badges over on D live. Thank you for the mafia over there. And uh, of course, thank you to everybody that just popped in to the geek. Uh, thank you. And then um, everyone that just, uh, subscribed lots of folks just popped in it's crazy that we only get subscribers when we're live and that's kind of funny makes you think uh and then uh bible talk triple seven thank you again uh stephen mcmahon thank you says uh thank you and then kendra perkins again thank you irish rebel appreciate you all right and then uh, troops took highly radioactive souvenirs from Chernobyl. It says the UKR state agency for Chernobyl warned that looted objects were highly dangerous and that their whereabouts were unknown. It says that the troops have looted lethally radioactive material from two laboratories in Chernobyl after fleeing the site at the end of March, according to the UKR government. It says that the occupants have stolen and destroyed 133 sources with a total activity of about 7 million uh, becarols, a unit of uh, radioactivity. And it says even a fraction of this activity is lethal if handled unprofessionally or uncontrollably. It says days after the initial invasion of UKR, uh, the Rus troops attacking from Belarus seized Chernobyl, the site of a highly radioactive explosion in 1986. So Dex, they're saying that items or that they took different things. Is this actual material? I think this is a yet another confirmation and probably a more solid confirmation because now that they're gone, right. Or they're, they've pulled out of that area and others can go in and see it. But if you recall, we spoke specifically about um, the, the concerns that material, uh, radioactive material that could be used to, for dirty uh, boom booms was potentially taken from the facility, right? And so I think this sort of confirms that that has happened, or at least there are things that have been taken that are extremely, you know, uh, have a high level of radioactivity to them. So um, I don't know to what extent exactly any of those items are or if it's physical material um so i guess you know be on the lookout right i think that's what we need to pay attention to well and then this isn't the first time by the way he heard a huge explosion i don't know if that that trans uh transitioned over the mic but 
huge boom. I always, you know, when you think, when you're talking about this stuff and then you hear a big explosion, it's kind of like, uh, either way, um, there was chemical stuff that went missing. Now there's objects and things like this. Um, can they put, by the way, it's so are we going to hear about, uh, you know, a few funerals in, in, uh, in Vlad country, like a couple soldiers that took a knickknack and knickknack paddywhack. Now you're, uh, dead. <laughs> uh, or was it on purpose? Are they going to mix that dirt or whatever they took souvenir wise into something? How would they be able to utilize that to harm somebody? Or was it truly like, oh, they saw something cool from uh, Chernobyl and grabbed it? Like, <clears throat> it makes them sound like idiots. Like, nobody there was told, like, hey, everything here is radioactive. It just, it, again, makes them look really stupid. Like, people were just grabbing things to grab. Uh, computers and office equipment were taken away and laboratory equipment and measuring devices were broken or destroyed. That just doesn't make sense. The level of containment and safety of calibration dumps and radioactive contaminated fluids cannot be determined. It said the status of contaminated substances will be clarified after appropriate inventories and measurements have been made. So why why was this stuff left out? I understand that people have been going there for years. Study people that have studied Chernobyl. Uh, you know, did they leave it like a museum, like everything, like beakers were just sitting out in the labs, or or would you think that they would want to bury that stuff or go in slowly? I mean, people have been uh, you know taking care of the place. I should say, you know, to a point, right? Because it does look like an abandoned city, like just everybody's gone. It's one of the creepiest places in the world. Do you guys agree or disagree? If you've seen videos of it, it's pretty nuts. Um, and the surrounding towns, I believe, too. It's, it's like it's like if you just took a city and then all of a sudden everyone left out of nowhere. Just didn't grab their things, just left. All right. And then uh, Shirley Baker, thank you for subscribing. Everybody that just joined, Marsha Young. Stephen Dillhowell, thank you. Uh, Jerry, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, I would, that would be cool if it was the real one. Anyways, thank you for subscribing and let's see here. Steven Wilco, thank you so much for subscribing as well. As always, if you do subscribe during the show, you will get a shout out. I appreciate that. And then Kendra again, thank you as well. Um, and then, uh, Dex, before you talk about some of the crazier stuff here, I do want to remind people, if you haven't already, go over and check out Off Grid. If you don't want to be tracked or traced, go to marfuglenews.com slash off grid. They have bags. They have Faraday bags that can protect against EMP. They have, uh, again, CME, anything else. Uh, they also have uh, uh, spars, smaller bags for your smaller devices like your tablets, laptops, and, of course, your cell phones. If you use the code marfugal, you will actually save Again, marfuglenews.com slash offgrid. Uh, the savings depends on which item you're getting. But again, uh, if you use that code marfugal, you should get a discount at checkout. Uh, these are extremely high, high, high quality bags. Uh, they were originally called EDEC, and they made their product for agencies like FBI as uh, for evidence bags and for their agents uh, to essentially keep anyone from hacking them and getting information out. Uh, but these now, they are also selling to civilians, and they are one of the most badass products out there. It is a private company. They are absolutely, really just high-quality stuff. Uh, I just actually gave one of mine to uh, Dave, my buddy, uh, and he's actually using it to not be tracked, traced, or listened to. So if that's something that you are in concerned about, then I highly recommend you go over there and check it out. All right, and then Dex, the web only is pretty insane. Absolutely, Adam. So head over to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, and scroll down to web only content or on YouTube. Open that description and click the link that says show notes. It'll take you to the rest of the story. Everything else is here. So we've got uh, new stuff uh, coming out, more um, things related to that infamous laptop. Uh, an update, another update on Elon, uh, but this is coming from particularly a, a manager in the engineering department who 
completely flipped out over him. You can find out what was going on. Um, there's a uh, new, um, there's new information going on in Texas. So I think we have reported about the activity they were taking last week and that's continuing um, and lots of other things going on, including uh, a person who got arrested at a gas station. So you can go find out why that happened and what exactly happened in that scenario. That and much, much more is available on marfuglenews.com. This is the news that's too hot for TV, too far to one side, uh, too opinionated. Uh, we put it there. We collect it all. We make sure it's available to you every time we do one of our long format shows. So marfuglenews.com or open that description in YouTube and click on show notes. Which, by the way, there's so much BS, uh, the, the whole Twitter thing. Uh, thank you, everybody, for popping in. As far as uh, just watch out, if you do have those JB stickers to put on uh, gas pumps, you may be arrested. That is all over there, plus any of the sources for today's show. Uh, final reminder on what is happening with the planet. Um, don't know about the change. Don't know about the weather being this or that. Uh, what I do know, though, is on the animal side of things, there are very alarming things happening right in front of our eyes. And uh, whether that's man-made or man-controlled or on purpose or is a sign of the times, I just uh, I would think that most people should probably recognize by now it, it pays to be prepared and it pays to also be aware. Uh, so for the rest of your family, if people think you're crazy, don't worry about them. Uh, again, that they'll they'll see in time. Uh, some of this stuff is going to come true. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of us are not going to be side blinded by it. We're going to choose to know what's going to happen. As far as the list, the DHS list and everything else, if you have more pieces to this puzzle, email me at amatmarfugalnews.com or uh, di direct message me over on Twitter. My DMs are always open. I can't get to everybody, but I try to get back to as many people as I can. And sometimes people get buried. So if you want to try every three days, go ahead. Uh, if you do daily, though, that's, uh, you know, that and we'll end up getting uh, skipped over. If you can be respectful of my time as well, I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much and love the Fugle fam. Thank the mods especially. Uh, thank you for all the prayers for the different mods and they're, they're uh, different. We have a lot of things going on right now as far as everybody has... Um, you know, just life going on. So thank you everybody that has shown love to each other. Thank you everybody that was uh, polite in chat and that also just regular people that were not mods. Thank you for telling people how it works here and uh, just pushing people up and not pushing people down. So thank all of you guys. It is uh, my pleasure to say thank you, Dex. I appreciate you. Uh, much love. Great show, brother. It is now time for the shout -tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shout -tro.